हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द टेट्राहेड्रोन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस सो इन द लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स आई हैव एक्सप्लेन सम स्टीरियो केमिकल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक रिएक्शंस सो इन दैट सीरीज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक दिस अनदर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ एस्पेक्ट ऑफ योर रिएक्शन मैकेनिज्म एंड दैट एस्पेक्ट इज एक्चुअली द स्टीरियो स्पेसिफिक रिएक्शन राइट so far in my first uh, in my last uh, one or two classes you have uh, uh, you have seen i have explained the regio selectivity and your stereo selectivity as well as your chemo selectivity right and if you remember uh, in your see chemo selectivity is something different right we cannot club together all the four you, we can take uh, this uh, chemo selectivity separate which i have explained in my last classes right so now i am uh, clubbing my stereo specific and stereo selective reactions now what is the difference between the two see uh, when uh, i have explained the stereo selective reaction i uh, made a, uh, i um, said that stereo selective reactions actually are product stereo selective reaction right so if you haven't seen that video on uh, stereo selective reactions here is the link you can go through the link first right and then you will come here and then uh, only then you will understand what is the difference between the two so whenever we are talking about the stereo specific reactions stereo specific reactions means it is actually reactant selectivity reactant selectivity right so actually see whether you are stereo selective or uh, this kind of reaction which we are calling it as stereo specific reaction they all are the selective reactions actually but previous cases uh, uh, they were they were the cases of your uh, product stereo uh, product selectivity now this i am taking as the reactant selectivity now say what is the meaning of reactant selectivity see Uh, for example uh, say uh, you must be knowing about a very famous reaction which is known as uh, say beckmans rearrangement beckmans rearrangement right so if you know the beckmans rearrangement then you know it is uh, nothing but uh, conversion of your acetaldo oxime or the keto oxime to the uh, n substituted amide right so uh, how we can relate see you know this uh, beckmans uh, rearrangement is stereo specific reaction how it is stereo specific reaction i am going to explain see this is my product see, see this is my reactant not product say this is carbon double bond nitrogen right and here i am putting say ar what it and your ar is nothing but it is your say c6h5 right so this ar is your c6h5 and here i am putting ch3 and here i am writing oh and of course this is the lone pair right so uh, this molecule actually you see it is having carbon double bond oxygen in between them that mean it can show geometrical isomerism there is Uh, hindered rotation about this carbon double bond nitrogen so this is a fixed geometry this is the one isomer now what can happen you see you can take uh, another isomer of this one say for example in this time you are making your uh, reactant in this way this is the lone pair say this is the oh group right and here you see you are putting ch3 and you are getting say ar here so these are the two isomers they are the geometrical isomers right and uh, you see uh, this uh, first compound is actually known as say uh, this uh, compound is uh, one particular geometrical isomer and for time being i am calling it as anti isomer and this one i am calling it as sen isomer so don't confuse about anti and sen right but i'm going to explain what is happening actually here so this molecule can exist in this two way now what you can do you can subject uh, this uh, re reactant or these reactants individually in the separate vessel 
uh, to undergo the Beckmann's rearrangement. So in the first case, you say you are taking uh, some acid. Say acid you uh, must be the strong acid, right? Could be a strong acid. And if you are saying strong acid, then obviously say this one. SO3H. Say this is benzene sulfonic acid you are taking. This is the dehydrating agent. And you, if you are taking acid, that means dehydration would occur. What happens here, you see, you are getting this product. Right? Uh, what product you are getting? This is your carbon. Right? And in this carbon, you are getting this carbon is there and say this double bond O, I am getting this double bond O nitrogen and I am putting hydrogen here and I am taking this AR here and of course this is CH3 right so this is a rearrangement kind of reaction so uh, don't bother about how to if, if you know the Beckmann's rearrangement that it is very very good if you don't know the Beckmann's rearrangement you can think or uh, you can uh, say you can say this is uh, the product which we get in the Beckmann's rearrangement when we subject this reagent to this one right and now what you can do you can subject this compound also under the same conditions taking a uh, strong acid with this the kind of thing and then you will get your product in this way C double bond O NH CH3 and here you are getting your AR that means your phenyl ring so these two products are getting and these two products are different product right so uh, if you if you start your reaction with this one and if you try to make this compound it will never form this compound it will always form this compound where this methyl group is move from here to here right and now if you think in another way say you are taking this reagent and with the help of this reagent you are going to make this particular isomer it will never form that's why i called it as reactant selectivity if you start with this reactant you will end up you will always end up with this kind of the product if you start your reaction with this kind of confer this kind of geometrical isomer then you will always find this one not this one right so this is actually stereo specificity where one particular stereo isomer producing one particular kind of product and not the other kind of product right this is called the stereo specific reaction and you know the uh, feature of this uh, Beckman rearrangement is that it is actually the anti migration anti migration now what is the meaning of the anti migration see uh, uh, see for first uh, first you see here uh, this is your OH group right this is your OH and this is your CH3 these two are on the same side if these two are on the same side you are calling uh, you you can call it as uh, say uh, uh, this is uh, sin these two are sin so uh, what I am doing I am see I am writing it as W W stands for the white and this OH I am writing as G G stands for the green right and this AR I am uh, writing as R that is red right say this is your molecule right say this nitrogen is this one this is your lone pair and this green is your OH group this white is your actually CH3 and this R is your actually AR group so uh, what this uh, see if you if you uh, slightly turn this structure you will find the double bond here right and if you uh, see if you are uh, seeing from the top right if you are seeing from the top molecule uh, so this is actually here towards your side that means it is in the one plane and this is on the another plane and if you if you try to match them right in this way right so these two groups are anti that means this AR is anti to the OH and this is uh, the speciality about Beckmann's rearrangement the group which is anti to the OH group here this AR right the group which is anti to the OH group will migrate during Beckmann's rearrangement right this is the condition actually 
right so why, that's why this oh uh, this oh is here and this r is and ar is nt to this oh group that mean when the rearrangement occur this group would migrate right and it will join nitrogen here so obviously what is happening here you see this nitrogen and it is getting this ar here got it now say if you if you change if you little bit change say uh, you change this position right now uh, now say uh, you have uh, put it in this way if you have put it in this way so this ar was red so this is red r and this ch3 was white now this is white right in the previous case this was migrating but now this ch3 is nt2 oh group now this will migrate to the nitrogen and of course you are getting this ch3 is migrating so this is uh, the stereo specificity and we are calling it as reactant selectivity because reactant is deciding whatever what uh, product would form in the reaction right so if you start with this one you are find you will end up with this one if you start with this one you will end up with this one but never starting with this one and you are getting this one it is not possible right and you are starting with this one you are getting this one it is again not possible because nt group in beckmann's rearrangement will always migrate so right so these two are what you see these two are uh, actually the stereo isomers because uh, your oxymes I always show the geometrical isomers these are the oxides so they are the geometrical isomers but in this case say for example if you have uh, say a reactant uh, this is a isomer this is b isomer right but they are say constitutional isomer constitutional isomers that mean uh, they are the structural isomers if they are the structural isomers and it is forming say c it is forming d same thing i am explaining here but here they were the these two were the geometric uh, geometrical isomer that is stereo isomers that's why the reaction termed as the stereo specific but here in this case i am taking two structural isomers or the constitutional isomers a is going to produce c b is going to produce d but this a will never produce d similarly this b will never produce c right again the reaction is specific reactant is specific but you are uh, you are taking or you have taken your structural isomer so such reactions are called regio specific so such reactions are called regio specific reactions but they uh, for regio specific reaction your reactant your different reactant must be your structural isomers and for stereo specific they must be your stereo isomers right so guys in the last two or three classes i have explained the four terms regio uh, selective reactions stereo selective and under stereo selective i have explained enantio selective and di di stereo selective and then i have taken uh, your chemo selective now finally i have uh, explained this stereo specific and regio specific reaction these stereo chemist stereo chemical terms and their understanding is must to know the perfect reaction mechanism say if you are organic chemistry student and in future you are going to join join organic chemistry lab and you want to design some drug then you should know the stereo chemical aspects of reaction very well if you keep these things in mind this lecture and uh, last one or two lecture and if you remember this trick in simple manner you will never going to miss uh, any problem in any examination based on this one right guys so uh, this is uh, end for this uh, lecture so guys if you are new here watching my lecture for the first time so kindly subscribe the tetrahedron chemistry classes and see you this subscription will cost you nothing actually it's free or in turn if you uh, if you subscribe this uh, my channel this tetrahedron chemistry classes and so you will get all the latest uh, so you will uh, you will get the videos about the interesting aspects of the chemistry right so if you really like the lecture uh, see uh, like my video right and do share with your friends and don't forget to press the bell icon for the latest notification thank you thank you very much